Right, joining us after his talk to the University of Warwick Conservative Association, we're delighted to be joined by Mark Pawsey, MP for Rugby since 2010. Mark, first things first, how did you enjoy uh, the talk to the association? Well, I enjoyed coming onto the campus. I know Warwick University site pretty well from my business career as a supplier of products to the university uh, many, many years ago. But it was very interesting to sit with a group of people and uh, talk about issues as I see them right now but then to ask to answer some pretty challenging questions mm. uh, we spent a lot of time talking about planning and development because uh, very clearly we haven't been building the number of houses that we need and um, you know people want to see that happen and in the audience here tonight people want to see it happen but there were still some reservations about the impact on the local environment of development so we, we had a, a, a pretty good chat I enjoyed it. Now of course before you were the MP you were a councillor in rugby for quite a long period of time you also uh, have a career in business, um, do you value one over the other in terms of aspiring politicians? Um, not really. I, I tend to think that um, my time in the council chamber in, in rugby was uh, a sort of a, a training proving ground before going <laughs> into parliament. I often argue that uh, being a councillor and being an MP is pretty playing the same game but on a different pitch. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so, so, so my role as a councillor, in fact, my role as a councillor that inspired me to want to become an MP in, in the first place. Um, I do hope that having had a business career, that I've got something that I can bring to parliament and use that experience. And that's one of the reasons why I'm very pleased to be sitting on the Bay's uh, Select Committee right now. Mm. Now, of course, you were a rugby lad, but you also stood uh, in Nuneaton, um, standing for a seat where, um, obviously, it's not your home seat, but it's good experience, I imagine, uh, uh, standing in that particular, a different parliamentary constituency. How did you find that? Was it a rewarding experience? Um, yes, it was. And, uh, you know, there are um, some very, very capable MPs who get selected for a winnable seat first time round and go on to great success in Parliament. I think it actually probably helped me by uh, contesting a seat that uh, I didn't win first time round. I learned a lot about it, probably learned a lot about myself and I certainly think that the experience of fighting and not being successful uh, gave me a good grounding to then in 2010 uh, fight the seat that I uh, uh, originally wanted to fight <laughs> uh, which is my hometown where you know obviously I know a lot of people and I grew up there and uh, many of the issues that affect people there affect me and my family in exactly the same way so um, I, I thought it, yeah, it was good and I, I enjoyed getting to know uh, the people of Nuneaton in the, the period that I fought the election there. Now of course going back to rugby uh, you have the added pressure of your father being the former MP for rugby uh, in the well, it was a different name uh, it was before it was rugby, it was a different Rugby in Kenilworth. Rugby right. in Kenilworth. Um, Jim Pawsey, obviously, yeah. your, your father. Yeah. Um, was that a lot of pressure, obviously, having your father, who, whilst you're both Conservatives, you both have, I imagine, similar viewpoints, you might differ on certain things. Did you, did you take the advice of your father a lot when you first became an MP? Probably not really, because um, I, I was very happy to learn as, you know... I, any other new new MP. I mean, interestingly, from my father's career, I knew very well what to do in the constituency because I, I spent time with him in the constituency, but I hadn't spent a great deal of time with him uh, down in Westminster. And I suppose uh, I went through the same learning processes uh, as any, any other new MP. Um, it is always very interesting to uh, buy ideas off my dad and chat <laughs> about policy, and I'm afraid uh, on quite a few issues we differ, not right. least. Uh, we were on different sides of the argument uh, when it came to the referendum about Britain's position in the EU so um, sometimes it's, it's useful to take uh, parental advice and I now find myself in the same situation of discussing things with my own children <laughs> so well, you know, it's, it's not always that we're going to be on the same side of the argument. Perhaps one of your children yeah. will be the next MP for up the knows? RCA. Who knows? <laughs> uh, you mentioned the EU debate yeah. then yeah. Um, obviously that's something that, that is continuously going on uh, in the media um, Nigel Farage uh, I know you spoke about it in the talk mm. but obviously people who couldn't come to the talk wouldn't have known that you brought it up and saying that he's uh, whilst not endorse it, he's made a few comments relating to a second referendum in terms of putting the issue to bed. Um, it's something that's been spoken about by the Lib Dems at first and then Labour have kind of, a few Labour MPs have jumped on it. Um, is there any way you could be convinced to support a second referendum, would you say? No, and I think this is Nigel Farage not having been in the press for some time, the media spotlight <laughs> for some time, trying to get back into the media spotlight. I mean, I would have liked to the outcome of the referendum to have been different, but I, in Parliament, voted for a referendum with a simple majority, uh, and frankly, as a Democrat, you know, we, ha we now have to... Uh, uh, 
work with that decision and you know I think it's great that you know after uh, you know, a year of negotiations we're now getting on to the substantive bit which is the, the the trade arrangement with the EU and it was always the trading uh, opportunities that membership of the EU gave us that was was, was at the heart of my concern and you know uh, we've seen you know manufacturing industry in the part of the West Midlands that we're in right now grow develop I think as a consequence of access to the European market and the free movement uh, that exists between uh, the UK and, and the EU and I, and I want to see as much of that as re- retained as possible in the negotiations and you know we now got on to those very very important negotiations I think that's very important for the prosperity and jobs for our region. Just a couple of things on the Conservative Party, if I may. You brought it up in the talk, and I think uh, a lot of people, both on the Conservative side and the opposition side, have been focusing on the reshuffle this week. Um, and I think it's it's fair to say, from a fairly neutral point of view, that, that it was perceived by some to be a bit of a disaster uh, in terms of not much seemed to happen. Certain people uh, who were expected to move stayed in the same role. Um, and, of course, there was a, 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 an incident where Chris Grayling was tweeted to be the next chairman, and, of course, he wasn't. Um, I mean, how do you look upon that event? Do you think the media is making too much of it, or do you think there's there's a fair amount of criticism? Obviously, there's a new party chairman. Thoughts on that? Well, there's a new party chairman who, um, if he didn't know uh, the work <laughs> that he needed to do in refreshing and revitalising um, Conservative uh, CCHQ, then he knows now. Um, but I, I think that you know we've had some interesting. Um, uh, appointments, uh, many of whom are from my 2010 intake. So these are mm. people that I've got to know um, in seven, year, seven years in Parliament. And I've generally felt in my time in Parliament that the right people have ended up in in, in the right positions. So in, in that, the very capable and competent people from my intake have found their way into senior positions. We're now seeing some of the 2005 intake getting getting to, getting to positions of, of responsibility as well. And I think. You know, it's a bit like a, a a business or a team. Really, you've got to bring bring people forward and give them their opportunity. And I think that you know, once the dust has settled, and certainly there were issues about timing and how the whole thing happened. But I, you know, I've got every respect for the competence of my colleagues who are in senior positions. And uh, you know, as a backbencher, I look forward to uh, supporting them in, in in the decisions they're making. Final couple of things. Um, the general election, of course, was uh, last year now, the 2017 general election. It's something that you spoke about today, and obviously a lot of members uh, weren't happy with your performance. Do you think the party is starting to learn now what went wrong um, in terms of that election, or do you think it's going to take quite a few more years before you can fully suss it out? No, I, I think there are, there's enough experience within our party to understand what went wrong in 2017. Um, we, we weren't ready. We hadn't, we hadn't expected that there would be uh, a general election, and you know we, we we need to learn from that. I think I think that I think that's happening. Um, you know we are expecting to run through to 2022. That's certainly my expectation right now. Um, there's a, a lot to get on with. There's, as I mentioned, there's the negotiations with the EU mm. as to delivering Brexit, uh, and then moving forward at, 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 once once we know the nature of that new relationship. So um, you know we've learned um, and we will move forward and I, you know, I, I think you know, we've got a, a new party chairman who will get the party in, in the right shape uh, for us to be a real fighting force for 2022. Um, Damien Green, of course, you were the, um, is it the private secretary, the parliamentary, parliamery private secretary, secretary which you yes, described yes. as a glorified assistant. Well, it is an assistant, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great opportunity to see at first hand the work that ministers do. And, mm. uh, you know, I've got every respect for anybody in ministerial role, really, they are under a lot of pressure. It's a big job. Mm. And he, he was an ally yeah. to yeah. Theresa May, Damien yeah. Green in particular. Um, he's hit the news for yeah. probably the wrong reasons yeah. uh, recently. Do you have any comments on that? Obviously, you work quite closely with him. Do you feel he's been uh, slightly mistreated or? I, I think what's happened is unfortunate but I think Damien would say that that that's happened let's move on and we've got plenty to do in government and I'm sure Damien will be able to make a very positive role as a member of the, member of the party from the back benches and uh, you know I look, I look forward to uh, us taking advantage of that experience that he's got. And just finally someone asked you tonight yeah. about fox hunting yeah. it's something you've previously supported it was of course in the 2017 Conservative Manifesto yeah. it's subsequently been dropped and yeah. um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, I think it was unfortunate that it was included. Um, it wasn't an, a big issue 
for the majority of the people across the country. Um, I, I have been on record as supporting Fox News. I said here this evening that you know it might be something that I'd really want to think long and hard about if there were to be uh, a, a decision on it in, in, in you know coming years. Um, I, I don't think, however, there will be. And it does seem to me that we've got a situation where those who want to enjoy their sport in the countryside are able to, not in the way that they used to in the past, mm. but um, you know the, 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 there is there is a structure there and so uh, to answer your question I think it's unfortunate that it was it was uh, it came up during the, the general election and you know, certainly from my uh, post bag and the emails that I get I've got a pretty good understanding of where uh, the majority of my constituents stand on this one. Mark Horsey thank you very much for joining me. My pleasure thank you. I'm Mark Horsey and you're listening to Raw.